the chokehold is locked in. Welcome to This Week in MLS presented by Target. Welcome to the AT&T MLS studios in Midtown Manhattan. I'm Andrew Wiebe. This is Stephen Keel. This isn't our show, but finders keepers, Stephen. So I think by the rules of the universe, Kaylin and Susanna are out. This is ours. We are in. Listen, yes. it's like in the game, right? The starter goes out with an injury, international call-up, replacement comes in, balls out, you get a W, you got to keep your place in the lineup. Exactly. And you know we're going to ball out. There's no question about right, that. We got, got some Zlatan talk Ooh. coming, Golden Boot, Kai Kamara, Truth or Dare. But w what's that? Sorry, Hold producer up. Paul? Yeah, Kalen's gone, and he still wants to be part of the show and start with his twin mm -hmm. takeaway? Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, fine. Roll it. Just roll it. What's up? It's Kalen here in Los Angeles. Yes, I know you're jealous, but I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, out here doing another movement shoot. Um, no, this time it's not about orcas, unfortunately, um, but I'm still working on that one. This one's going to be a good one, too. Anyways, uh, my twim takeaway, down to business. Um, I want to give a shout-out to the New England Revolution and FC Cincinnati for getting big wins coming off what has been a tough stretch for both teams. Um, I've been on teams where a manager gets fired. You get a little bit of a bounce afterwards because, frankly, everybody's trying to show off for the new guy and uh, try and keep a spot on their team. So that results uh, are big for them, but they're gonna need consistency now going forward. Lapper, DeMay, good wins, but still more work to do for both sides. See you guys, see you soon. Fine, Kalen, you got your due. He's, even when he's not here, he's the star. Insufferable, man. Gosh. 29 years old, that's how old Johan DeMay is. And he yeah. got his first MLS win with FC Cincinnati. That is incredible. I don't think either of us we're past 29. Let's just put it that way. Age is but a number. Age is simply a but a number as well. But congrats to him as well. And hopefully he can build off that going forward. Mike Lapper took over New England Revolution. Repping right now. Mm -hmm. Looks like his reign as interim coach is ending because Bruce, Bruce is rolling back to MLS. Bruce Arena, you know him from the U.S. national team. You know him from D.C. United's dynasty. Yep. You know him from L.A. Galaxy's dynasty. He's back, man. He's he, the sporting director and the head coach. He is kind of in charge of everything. And I know there's going to be animosity towards him for what happened with the U.S. men's national team. But make no mistake about it, this is the guy who's won wherever he's gone in MLS. His track record speaks for itself. Five MLS Cup championships, Open Cups, Supporter Shield, he's done it. But Andrew, the question I have is, not only is what is he going to do with the first team in that rebuild, but the whole organization as an ent entirety, you know, with the academy, what kind of system is he going to implement? Yeah, it's going to be a different job, right. let's say, than the one that he had with the Galaxy in 2014, 13, 15. Right. Those years when he's winning the title. But I think overall on this day, I, you know, I think wearing, wearing and seeing the Revolution kit, I feel a little bit of optimism with that, a little bit of hope that, hey, we're going to be trending in the right direction. Yeah, whether you agree or disagree, there is no doubt, this is a huge hire, a huge move for the Revs, for the Crafts, for that club and that organization. What will happen? We'll have to wait and find out. Bruce has got a transfer window this summer. He's got another one in the winter. That LA Galaxy team he took over way back when, he tore it down, man. Right. So you're playing for your jobs if you're in New England. And at this point with these results, maybe that's the way it needs to be. And it'll be interesting as well, so who is on Bruce's staff? Yeah. His two of his key guys, three of his key guys, are all on other teams, Pat Noonan, with Philadelphia Union. Matt Reese, goalkeeper coach, now with Columbus Crew. And then Dave Serkin, obviously, in the USL head coach there. So it'll be interesting to see how he builds this. Um, but it's going to be, like I said, <laughs> interesting it's to interesting. say the least. Interesting to say the least. All right, get in the comments section. Let us know what you think. Bruce Arena with the Revs. Time for my twim takeaway. Yours is coming next. Don't worry. We'll get to you, Steven. I don't want to, if you were Bobby Warshaw, I'd reach over and choke slam oh. you. That is kind of what Zlatan did this weekend. <laughs> against Sean John and NYCFC. These are two big guys stepping up and, oh yeah, I, oh yeah, okay, I see that. That's hands to throw. That should probably be a red card, as Bobby Warshaw said on Instant Replay. This is WWE stuff from Zlatan. It's the game within the game. This is the Undertaker coming in, <laughs> throat slamming him right to the ground. And yeah. like you said, Sean John's no small dude either, no. right? Two large guys, but I think you're right, Weeby. Clearly, you can see the video, hands to the throat, hands to the face. It's intentional. It's obvious right yeah. there. This ever happened to you? You were back there mixing it up with these center forwards who, let's be honest, don't have a care in the world for you they, center backs. Oh, man. They never, I never was really struck in the throat. I got a lot of, like, stepping on the toes. We gotcha. always did that. 
guys, well, especially on set pieces, they just come and they just like stomp in your foot and you're like, bro, what are we doing here? Why, why, why are you stepping on my toe? Which actually probably hurts more uh, than having someone put their hands yeah. around your neck. But I can't say I've ever had someone put my hands on my neck and if they did, Probably wouldn't go well. Probably have issues. This By is, the way, Zlatan's done the whole foot stomp too. Remember that red card against Montreal? He's got some tricks in the bag and Sean John said so. Forwards, man. Afterward, he was like, doesn't matter. We won. Give me the points. Zlatan was mad about that. He's a clever boy. Your twin takeaway. Hit him with for my twin takeaway, I gotta go to the Windy City. Give my team Chicago Fire some love. I'm not sure anyone had a better past seven days in the fire. Picked up a big 5-0 win against the New England Revolution. Well, that's, uh, don't mention that. That's Things in the have past. changed for That's us. in the Things past, right? But they followed it up with arguably their best performance to date, a 2-0 win over Minnesota United, highlighted by probably one of the best counter-attacking goals I've seen in a long, long time. Minnesota United corner kick turns into a Nico Gaitan walking it in to the back of the net on the other end. Absolutely poetry in motion. Andrew, I think what we've seen with this team prior is so many chances created, but they haven't been able to kind of tuck those yeah. home. Last couple games, they find their scoring boots. But for me, what I like most is last three games, three clean sheets, including one clean sheet at Bank of California Stadium, LAFC, only team to take some points away from there. Good yeah, job for that. Uh, that's pretty good. The clean sheets are where Velko Panovic will want to start. Tactically, it's interesting too. 5-3-2, right. transitions to 4-4-2, and you have Frankowski or Katai oh. just rolling. Just rolling, baby. Get on your horse. That's Get into it. the attack. Get it done. All right. Those are our twin takeaways. Let us know what you think. Can you believe your eyes? Keel, <laughs> about what you might ask. You don't know yet. Yeah, what, what am I seeing? What How am I seeing? What, what, Let's what, start what, with what, this. Yes. Is Kai Kamara a golden boot contender? He's got seven goals. Carlos Vela has 12, so, you know, five is, uh, that's a nice round number to catch up, but is he a legit Golden boot presented by Audi Contender. Contender, yes. Okay. Okay, Kai Kumar, everywhere he's gone, scores goals. I think since he's come back from England, he's hit double digits every year. The dude knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. But, but, but double digits is not golden boot. That's true, that Weeby. that is very true. And I think the issue that we're gonna run in for Kai is not necessarily for him, it's the other guys in front of him. Zlatan, the guy just gonna continue to bang goals in. And the guy, who's, he's five goals ahead yeah. of him, Carlos Vela. Carlos Vela. Is on another Carlitos, level. Cracklitos. People can't say he can't keep this form up. Uh, but what if he can? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if he, right. doesn't go to the, if he doesn't go to the Gold Cup, he very well could. All right, can you believe your eyes? Sporting KC will miss the playoffs. Can I start this one? This is your, yeah, this yeah, is your no, bread and butter. I, I don't believe my eyes. Yeah. Their current form is not who they are. Now, I'm not sure that the 7 1 against Montreal was exactly who they are as well, but. Injuries, injuries, injuries. Mm -hmm. We got more players on the bench than they do right now. They had 14 players right. this last weekend against DC. They right. almost won. They're just scraping by, scraping right. by. And Peter Vermees knows how this league works. There are seven playoff spots now. They'll get Beasler back. Fontos and Zussi are coming back. Once Roger comes back, Benny integrates into the squad. Maybe Daniel Shalwi gets it going. He right. needs to without Gerso. And the end, this team will be a playoff team, I believe. Now, I don't think they'll have a home game. That's the one caveat because these losses, these draws, it's not going to let them get there. I think they're only three points outside of the playoffs right now. I think you're going to. I agree with you. Like what okay, you're doing. Our eyes, you. our eyes are good on that one. Can you believe your eyes? Frank DeBoer has figured it out in Atlanta. Five stripes, although this one has more than five. I'm going to stick with five though. I like that, but yes, I think Frank DeBoer has figured it out. Look, when you, I think coming into the season, everyone was like, "Oh, Atlanta United's just going to roll through the league." When you lose the coach of the year. The best player in MLS, it's going to take some time to get things going. Defensively, I think they've kind of figured it out. They've had four clean sheets. Love that. Luzon's been a rock back there. Offensively, I think Michael Parker said it best. They're starting to click. So I think they are starting to figure it out. The results speak for themselves. Yep. I like the fact that with Barco gone, Tito Viabla gets a chance. He needs that chance. Yeah. He's a double-digit goal scorer. If you get him rolling and then Barco comes back and Pity's now scoring right. goals, you're good. And not to mention with the guy we haven't mentioned, Joseph Martinez. MVP. Julian Gressel. Uh, can I get a shout-out in this section? Can we do a shout-out? Yeah, sure. Uh, Jeff Lorenowitz, the fifth player in MLS history for 400 MLS appearances. What a stud, yeah, huh? what a stud. Trivia time, though, okay. trivia. Let's go. There's I'm five players. Can you oh name the gosh. other four players with 400 MLS appearances? Non-goalkeepers. No goal players. No, nope, goalkeepers included. Oh, okay. That's a hint. All right, Kevin Hartman. Correct. All right, Jaime Moreno. Incorrect. Oh, wow. Kyle Beckerman. Correct. Nick Romando. Correct. This is a tricky one. Oh, boy. I love this Is one it a too. goalkeeper or not? No. Not a goalkeeper. 
It's a center back, which oh, is amazing. Oh, it's a center back, Chad Marshall. Yes! <laughs> well no done! Well, I had one wrong guess. That, right. Listen, that's all right. Feel good about that. Uh, can we double down on the trivia? Uh, Producer Paul, yes. Producer Paul says yes. Jeff Lorenowitz selected in the 2005 fourth round supplemental draft. Yeah. I think that's eighth round overall. Uh -huh. Can you name three other players? Uh, this isn't really trivia. I just want to point out that in that same fourth <laughs> round. Dave Yarno. No. Oh. Dan Gargan, Dan Kennedy, Chris Wondolowski. Good picks come yeah, late. All the Dans. All the all Dans. Dans. Where were you picked? You know what? I wasn't even picked in that draft. <laughs> That's my draft class, and I wasn't even drafted, right? <laughs> he's a legend. Right? He's a legend. All right. Anyways, I just got to give guys. So, anyway, shout out Jeff Lorenowitz. It's a huge accomplishment. Absolutely Congratulations, fantastic. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Believe your eyes or not, Tyler Miller, goalkeeper of the year for LAFC. He's killing it. Five shutouts. Least goals allowed in the league. Yeah, I think the stats speak for themselves. But for me, I want to see a little bit more of hit those game stopping, game saving stops. I think LAFC is a little bit a product of the system and the guys in front of Tyler Miller, that back four. Uh, Walker Zimmerman, arguably the defender of the yep. year. Beta Shore, Harvey, uh, so good. The nice thing is he's not going to have to make those stops. I think Tyler Miller would be like, it's cool. If I don't win goalkeeper of the year and we're the best team in MLS history, which, take that. believe your eyes or not, they are right now, right. he'll be all good with that. But yeah, so far so good for Tyler Miller. We'll see. All right, let's go to our. Did you see that? And uh, oh, yeah. You want to do the it? Rules are no, no. I think it, yeah, I'll do it. Whoa! Did you see thank that? Thank you, Simon Borg. Did you see that? What do we got here? Oh, that's Dirk. Is he gonna fall away? Yo. Is he gonna, what, is he gonna step back this PK? Yo, how you gonna uh, do my boy like this? I can tell you, hip flexors. Oh, good lord. Why are you gonna do my boy oh, like that? No, retirement came at the right time for my guy Dirk. He, Yo. You know, I don't even know how he was playing. Yo, last I just year, gotta right? take a drink. I gotta have a drink. For, I mean, right. <laughs> so much respect for the big man. If you're a legend, he is that times a hundred. Yo, can we dude. point out that he's got he's got shoot? He doesn't have his cleats on. That's a good point. That's a that, good point. That, a little that, slick there. Yeah, he doesn't want to fall down and embarrass himself me? in you front flip of the it. crowd. Even in retirement, right. you don't want to pull a hamstring. End of the day, though, we all know what it's about. That's results. He put the ball in the back <laughs> of the net. Dirk, one for one from the spot, man. Congratulations you know on a so career even, that goes down in history. The worst thing is, like, it's like when you let your, like, little cousin score on you and, like, the goalkeeper, like, jumps yeah, over the uh -huh. ball. Tex Hooper just kind of let it bounce off yeah, of him. Well, you know, oh, uh, my God. How are you going to do my boy <laughs> like that? Dirk, what a ledge. No daddy ball here. Okay? Yeah, you daddy ball. You're dad, this, right? Yeah, I know. Hey, save that thing. You're Teach him how to put it in the back of the net the real way. <laughs> this has been This Week in MLS, presented by Target. No Kaylin, no Susanna. Let us know what you think of that. They will be back next week. Check out Extra Time on, Inst on uh, YouTube as well. Ultimate Keel. Ultimate Keel. We're everywhere. <clears throat> yeah. Do you think, you think we performed well enough to earn uh, at least a spot in the 18? Uh, Producer Paul? What do you, uh, no. Uh, no, we're in the 18. We're in yeah! The 18. Yes! Let's right. go! Have a great week, everybody.